All right. Today I'm going to do a portrait. This one might take a while. It might take more than one day to do. But I'm going to go through some of the ways that I build something like this up. Uh, I made a drawing on the canvas. I used a grid to get it somewhere within the range of the... So that things are in the right proportion and in the right place on the canvas. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is go into some of the shadows with some green. As I go, I'll explain that. Now, um, if you're painting, when you're painting people, and you paint skin color, different people have different colored skin. And it's important, like, uh, a traditional thing to do when painting skin was to put on layers underneath that were like green, blue-green, because if your skin is light, it's translucent, you can see through it, and you can see veins and things underneath. The more melanin somebody has in their skin, the darker their skin is, the more opaque the skin is, and the less things that you see down underneath. For some reason, when I start a painting, this is Nina Simone. She's a singer from, for sure, in the 60s. Um, I still put a layer of green, even though her skin is fairly opaque. It has a lot of melanin in it. It's pretty dark. So I still go into the shadows with a little green. It doesn't matter because I'm going to cover most of this up as I go with other layers on top. But you still, when you paint with oil paint, a lot of times you end up with stuff that's more, you end up with a lot of layers of color. And you can see through the layers. So it's important to have color all the way through from the bottom layers to the top. I'm just going to start with green. This green's going to become more and more irrelevant as I put more layers on. We'll even put some in there, but that. All right, there's some basic underlayer.
I'm picking up excess paint from down in the area where I first started putting paint on. And going up and thinning it out into areas that are going to need more later. but areas that are lighter than the really dark area. Sometimes when I help students with painting because they don't know what it's going to look like when it comes out, they say, oh, you gave my person a mustache or something like that. and." It's just because they haven't seen the process of building up a surface. Now I might put a little of this darker color in the eyes. These eyes are very, very dark. With oil paint. I have the luxury of later coming in and putting a dab of white on top with watercolor you can't do that you have to build the thing up a little at a time Now the next thing I'm going to do is put some lighter colors in, oil paint. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to um, go so strictly with the painting from light to dark, that sort of thing. You can do, you can change the, the way that you put the layers on because Unlike watercolor, you can go over the top of it with new layers. All right, I'm going to put a few little coming back the other way with light. comes a point when you've obscured your drawing enough that you can't rely on it anymore. So you want to try and get things in as close as possible before that point. Next thing I'm going to do is put in one last layer I think and then I'm going to quit so that it can dry for the day. Alright I'm going to put some some highlights on before I quit 
for the day. And I come back tomorrow and work on it. Sometimes with paint, just a dab in the right place is what it needs. I think what I'll do is get a brush or clean this one a little bit and just scrub stuff together. All right, I think that's enough for today because this this kind of painting requires some drying time so that things aren't mixing too much. I got the basic shadows on there. Okay, today what I want to do to, is to try and adjust the color on this a little bit. Now that's a little too uh, red, but I got to build this color up slowly. I need to go back in and reshape the eye because it's bothering me. eyebrow a little bit.
doesn't look like her yet. Um, I need to adjust come adjust colors. Now it's time to just adjust. Oil paint's nice because you can put on opaque. You can put on opaque over the top. Paint that you can't that you can't see through. Then you can build up layers. So in the end you may have started out with layers that were underneath that you can't see when you get to the end of the painting. That's okay. It's hard to get the uh, flow going. I need to get something going where I where I get a handle on the color because I need to keep adjusting and start adjusting the color. That's an important part of something like this. I think that this, um, this particular thing that I'm doing here, the technical term for it is scumbling. They got names for everything you do when you're making art. A person would recognize that they were doing if you see it and then see somebody doing it. And then they use this term, you'll recognize that you've done this, this thing before. And different people use different terms. I don't think it's that important that you understand the particular word for what you're doing. It's more important that you're able to do it. So I'm sort of blending the paint together in this fashion they call scumbling. I call it scratchy. I got a scratchy brush. Each time I work on this, I'm trying to perfect some of the highlights or adjust colors in some of the areas. Okay. Nina Simone has some very... See, now that's a little too bright, but I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to go ahead and go with that. And I'm going to adjust it. But she has some very purplish tones to her skin in the shadows on this photo. I, I don't know because a photo isn't real either. You know, you'd have to see a person to know exactly what you were looking at color-wise when you're painting. But I definitely know from this photo that I need some I need some purpley colors, violet, whatever you want to use for a term to describe it. There's even some over the top of that. And then I go back and scumble. So it wasn't so bad that that was such a bright color because it's blending in with the other ones. It's a little bit too bright of a purple, but a little color when you're painting doesn't hurt anything. Even if it's a little bit over the top, because a lot of times you can bring that back around to your advantage. 
I don't know why it works that way, but in a photograph, skin with, with melanin in it often makes you see violet colors, purple colors. You, you, you have to take your eye and look. Try to figure out what you're seeing. That's the thing probably in some ways that takes the most practice when you're when you're learning to paint is seeing what color you're actually looking at rather than thinking that you know. I think early in this uh, early in this I, I mentioned the fact that you you don't paint what you think you paint what you see and I also mentioned that <clears throat> there is no such thing as a person with a particular color of skin like brown or white or black that doesn't make any sense at all if you're a painter because uh, you're never gonna see anybody that this is this this is a painting of Nina Simone and she doesn't she has all different colors you have to have all the different colors. If you just painted somebody that looked like a piece of construction paper, or or no, no, if a person came up and they looked like a piece of construction paper, it would scare you because they wouldn't look right. They they don't have that kind of color on their skin. No one has that color. If a person came up, it would be, it would be scary. It would be like a mime who's put makeup on. The only way people get homogenous skin color is to put on makeup and and blend it in. Okay, I I have this face needs a more work. It's going to be uh, require more layers of color. I'm gonna start working on some of the details. You'll find in art when you paint things there may be things that you find more interesting. Like, if you look at a painting by Audubon, let's say, and he painted birds, he was most interested in the birds, and so he didn't put so much work into painting the leaves and the things around as he did into the birds or certain of the backgrounds. I don't know, there's certain things, certain types of painting and painters. Well, in the case of, in the case of what I'm doing here, I'm most interested in getting the portrait right. So I'm not so focused on this background but the background is important so I need to at some point start putting color into the background a little bit so that it doesn't get too far behind I definitely have a tendency when I'm painting these background things like this scarf to being more abstract and painterly when I paint them. I might go ahead and put in one of these large areas of shadow that's in this painting. I may have missed missed the last little part of that. I may have not recorded what I was doing, but I just painted the background in a little bit, put some some uh, work into the hair and the, not the hair, but the, the scarf that she's got on her head. I I want to go ahead and get some of those areas right before I go too much farther. 
So there's some little blue areas. That's really dark what I just put on there. And I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with some white, green, and blue. Brighten it more is what I'm trying to say. It needs to be a little brighter. Just scratching a little bit of paint in there. She has quite a colorful hair decoration. The the um, scarf, I guess, and her blouse or whatever. It's a shirt. I'm not a fashion guy. I don't know. But in case it, in case I didn't have the camera on during the other part, what I was saying was that you're creating the illusion that the person thinks they're seeing a person. This is Nina Simone, and when I get done, I'm hoping that it looks like her. I think it's recognizable to most people that know Nina Simone at this point. But the object is to create the illusion that you're seeing this person is a trick. You're playing a trick on people's eyes. You're, you're making them believe that they're seeing something that's not really the thing that they think they're seeing. This is a painting. It's not the photograph, and it's not the original person that the photograph was taken to represent. This is a painting of Nina Simone. It's not Nina Simone. It's an abstraction. It's something that you do in art. You create things you create images that trick people's eye into seeing shapes and patterns that you've constructed by painting. As, as I was saying, and I think I didn't get it recorded, perhaps I don't find the background as interesting as her face. So, certain artists in the past maybe Audubon or somebody like that, they paint the picture and then when you get to the background like the leaves and things, maybe they're not quite as well painted as the piece of artwork, or the or not the piece of artwork, but the subject of the artwork. Say like the, in the case of Audubon, the bird. Um, But, that's part of painting. That's why it's a painting and not a photograph or something. You, there must be something about it that's different. The, the, modern, the modern thing in art is to often put lots of either non-representational elements in the picture or put much abstraction to the point where you can't see 
the actual thing that you're painting, it, you must interpret the, the, what's going on on the canvas. Um, and that's fine, that's something to do. I believe you gotta learn how to paint first, like Gerhard Richter, and then go on and try to do the other things that you have in mind to make a painting. I'm gonna add a few subtleties, subtleties to the painting. I know there's a little bit of flecks of blue that go along with some of these. And later after it dries, I can come back and correct. I may even put this little, um, there's a very light, shadow painting over here white nearly white this will probably be a little darker and a little bluer than what the actual shadow is but I'll adjust it later I want this painting to have certain context for me as I'm painting. I need to see that I'm looking at certain things and say, okay, I'm right there. It's like reading a map because this is a grid drawing and there's coordinates on here. You can still see right there, there's a little one, one two, three, four. There's a point right there. For me, it's important that I keep some kind of a context. I think I put paint in a spot where there wasn't any. All right. Um, I may quit for the day. I'm going to work on the scarf a little bit because I think I pointed this out the other day. One of the things, artists have interest in certain things and I'm interested in painting the face. And the scarf becomes something that's somewhat less interesting to me. So I have a tendency not to put as much attention into that or possibly it becomes a somewhat different type of looser painting but I still want to get it somewhat accurate so that the pattern the illusion of the pattern is there What I'm doing right now is putting a kind of a peachy colored background in part of it because that's just a general color that's in the background. And much of the scarf.
some of this I'm going to paint in and I'll keep roughing it out as I work on the painting because this is not going to get finished today. However, it's getting much closer. Something that's bothering me right now, and since I'm using a color that's similar, is uh, the light and the dark on her face. So I'm going to start maybe adding a little more on that. Touch up a couple places there. Sometimes it's an artistic trick, an art trick, to bring color in from somewhere else, like something up here that's similar to something in here. Kind of ties the painting together a little bit, color-wise. So I'm going to work on some lightening up some places that I feel are a little bit dark. I really enjoy these places where there's overlapping color and where there's colors that you can see from the layers below. Again, I'm scumbling the paint in. I'm going to bring some of this color down into here because this is an unnatural sort of a purple color down here. Now the other day I painted the background in a little bit and I think I forgot to have the camera on. I'm going to go back and cut this a little bit more. Get this edge a little closer to what it really is. And I'm going to cut along the edge of her face because she has right now what I have going is a, a Nina Simone who looks somewhat older than the actual Nina Simone in this photo. If I make a couple changes in cutting that edge in there, I think I can improve that.
going to use a smaller brush to put some dark details in. Around the mouth. Along the hairline. really need to get something to um, smudge with that's not my finger because it's really not good practice. Well, I don't know if this brush is thin enough to do. There's a fairly distinct line along her mouth this brush is too thick. However, I can always cut the edge off of that later. With the other paint, since oil paint can be as opaque as you want it or light over, you can always put light over dark with oil paint. It's better to not rely on that, but if you have to do it, it's okay because you can with oil paint. I'm not sure how much can be seen on the video of what's going on on the surface but there are lots of layers that I can see down through these places layers that I put on underneath because none of the colors that I have put on were completely opaque so I can see lots of layers underneath from things that I've done before when I was painting on this one thing that I might do I may not paint too much longer today because I like just painting a little bit on this one and then coming back to it. But one thing I might do is put some little uh, light highlights on here. I'm going to go have a look at it from the distance and then I'll probably put a little more on the face to bring out the light compared to the dark. When you paint a person, you might underestimate or overestimate a feature that the person has. Um, so that becomes something that you have to deal with as, as you're painting. One thing that I see here that needs to be, this curve right here isn't quite right. This curve is more like this. But I know that 
I have a fascination with this light line. Not all people have that. I saw an Egyptian sculpture one time where the guy had that on his lip, and I find that an interesting place that catches light. This, this um, little line that's right there. And sometimes, because you're thinking that's interesting, you will exaggerate it or underestimate it. If you paint a person that you know, that you like, you might overestimate, exaggerate, or underestimate something because you're painting what you think about that rather than what you see and the whole thing the secret is trying to especially with portraiture you can't really be too wrapped up in the person that you're painting I I like to paint blues people and and in the case of Nina I liked her music it wasn't exactly blues but it was it was music that I like and so you have to kind of, I don't know, some, I, I should be listening to Nina Simone about this point and then I could get this right because sometimes you listen, sometimes, I don't know, that's kind of a weird thing, but sometimes listening to the music, if it's, if it's music that you like, sometimes that can make you get the person the personality that you're hear hearing. Human perception is strange. We didn't have a complete control over it. What we're, but, but you always have to know that you're gonna, your brain's gonna tell you stuff that's not accurate. You, ha you have to override stuff that you're thinking in your head when you're painting. Because a lot of times it won't be quite right. You paint what you see, not what you think. You paint what you know, but you only know that from experience of painting and knowing what traps you fall into when you're trying to get something right. Okay, I'm going to continue today to try to work on um, getting some of the details in this scarf built up.
I feel like I'm getting at a point here where I could really start putting the finishing touches on this.
All right. So this thing's getting very close to a place where I could probably stop. put some highlights in. And then I'm going to scumble those down a little bit. the last part of the tutorial I did a few things to the painting not exactly sure where it cut off at but it's basically finished so there's a look at it I could keep going I could go another hour I could go let it dry and work on it in a year or in months later and come back and add things you can keep going on these but there it is